Hello, and thank you for joining our Mass for the LGBTQ community, our family and friends. Tonight is the sixth Sunday of Easter. My name is Steve Forrest, and I am an officer with Dignity Chicago. The Chicago team is busy working on our plan to serve the current needs of Chicagoland and position us for success well beyond our 50th anniversary coming up in 2022, a truly exciting moment. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are producing this Mass with as few in-person individuals at Dignity Washington as possible and bringing it to you virtually. We encourage you to share our Facebook and YouTube links with others, like our chapter on Facebook, subscribe to YouTube to be alerted when other Masses are available. We hope that you will continue to give financially as you are able to Dignity to support the mission of Dignity to being an LGBTQ Catholic beacon. Please find links in the description. Our Mass has happened because of contributions from Dignity members across the country participating in person and virtually. We thank all individuals who have contributed to making this Mass possible, and they're noted in the credits. Please use whatever form of God you find most comfortable, and we encourage you to participate from wherever you are in our Mass and raise your voice to God. Thank you. Good night. God bless. Welcome to our Dignity Washington Mass for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our journey in this Easter season has certainly taken us in many places, and our scriptures has shown us a direction and a road to travel with Jesus, with the disciples, in discovering how we can take on the ministry and the life of Jesus. Every time we gather at the Eucharist should be an extraordinary experiencing of encountering Jesus in the word, in the sacrament, and in one another, and giving us the light and the way to follow Jesus and to encounter God in our lives. And so let us begin this Eucharistic celebration in the name of our God who creates, the Son who redeems, and the Spirit who sanctifies. The grace and peace of our risen Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we have been purified by the blood of Christ and reborn in the waters of baptism. Let us cry out to God with joy and longing that God may pour out the spirit who will conform us to the image of Jesus Christ. You died for us, the righteous for the unrighteous. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You rose victorious from the grave. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will send us the Spirit to remain with us forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive, we live in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then. Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. In your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. To my friends and family at the Dignity Community of DC, to members of my family, friends, I send greetings, good energy, prayers. It is a pleasure to be with you, albeit virtually in these challenging times of COVID-19. And I want to thank my lovely wife, Lisa, who I love dearly and is serving as my videographer. Thank you, Lisa. Love you. Appreciate you doing this for me and for the Dignity community. There's an old saying, it takes a thief to catch a thief. And if I can paraphrase that just a little bit, it takes a mystic to catch a mystic. And that is precisely the methodology that I've used as I prepared to share these brief words with you today by way of a homily. As we continue through this Easter season, being led by the, the brilliant powerful revealed words of John the Evangelist. John, the Jewish mystic, 
the consummate mystic whose gospel soars in, in wild flight above the rest of the New Testament. And I'll confess right up front that I've struggled for many years with John's gospel. As deeply moving as I find the words, I often get caught up in the, in the paradox, in the mystery. And I find myself in wonder, but also confused. And what I wanted to share with you, however briefly today, is the, the guide that I was fortunate enough to, to find, um, a guide to help me get deeper into the insights of, of John, the Jewish mystic on the Isle of Patmos at the end of his life. And that guide is a medieval Dominican, Meister Eckhart, lived in the late 13th, early 14th century. Um, Meister Eckhart, who as a Dominican succeeded the great Thomas Aquinas as holding the chair of theology at the University of Paris, but who could not be more different from St. Thomas Aquinas and from so many of the other great theological and spiritual lights in the church tradition. Because Meister Eckhart is a mystic, because he swims in the sea of, of paradox, because many of his insights are teetering at the verge of orthodoxy, and some would say tipping over that edge. He had problems with the hierarchy, was brought up on charges of heresy. That is our dog lady who is uh, affirming these insights, I'm happy to say. Um, I think Lady may be a fan of Meister Eckhart also. Um, but my point is that his sublime insights and his turn of phrase, the way that Eckhart is able to capture things and harness them in words is something extraordinary. And I've dabbled with his work for many years, but perhaps because of the unusual conditions in which we find ourselves, because of the challenges of this pandemic, I was forced to go deeper, and so I did. And I would just like to share with you some of his insights as a way of saying the angles that we can take on this mystery are myriad, they're profound, and they can bring us closer to that truth. Eckhart could say things with a refreshing directness. At one point he said, God is at home. Is it we? It's we who've gone out for a walk. I mean, how mm -hmm. perfect is that for these days? And let me go further and say that as much as the Trinity is a is a bedrock part of our faith tradition, it's a mystery I've struggled with my whole life, and I'm quite sure that will persist. I'm not driving, so I can take a little uh, different kind of liquid refreshment today. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, with um, all due respect to St. Thomas Aquinas, to St. Bonaventure, St. Augustine, even Karl Rahner, who many of us were exposed to in the seminary, in all of my years of study, I've never come across a description of the Trinity that went like this from Eckhart. When the father laughs at the son and the son laughs back at the father, that laughter gives pleasure, that pleasure gives joy, that joy gives love, and that love is the Holy Spirit. Now, you're not going to find insights like that too many other places. Mm -hmm but how perfect, how well received that is as we try to grapple with the words of John about the advocate, the promised advocate. How wonderful that lens of Eckhart is to see that in terms of the members of the Trinity laughing at each other, generating pleasure and joy and love the love that is the Holy Spirit. I'll take it. I'll take it.
So I don't want to turn this into a lecture on theology. I just want to offer to you, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to hold out to you the, the insights of Meister Eckhart, who even a small experience with will take you to places that you could have never expected. And there's a trash truck or something coming down the street. Eckhart would find that hilarious. So I'm going to wrap up here and finish with another brief phrase that's close to my heart from Meister Eckhart. He said, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, it will be enough. I think I can leave it there. I would be glad to share with you at another point some of the sources I used for my exploration of Eckhart. This isn't the time for that, but you can just get in touch and I'll be glad to share with you who my guides to Eckhart were. Eckhart, my guide to John the Evangelist and the wonderful mystery of the ongoing incarnation, which is how creation works. Thank you. God bless you. Please keep me in my prayers. Know that you're in mine. And um, I long for that day we can be together at St. Margaret's in DC. God bless. My sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Jesus promised to remain with us forever, keeping his commandments and walking in love. We pray for the world so need of heal, in need of healing. The response to the petitions today is, God, receive our prayer. That the spirit of truth may dwell always in the midst of our church and our dignity community, we pray. God, God receive, receive our prayer. prayer that the nations and peoples of the earth may accept and recognize God's messenger of justice and peace, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. That families experiencing pain and difficult times, especially now during this worldwide health crisis, may rediscover God's spirit of love in their midst, we pray. God, God receive, receive our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the troubled, those who have asked for our prayers, and those uh, inscribed in our book of intention. We pray especially for Matthew and Timothy. We pray for all who suffer with COVID-19. And those prayers uh, and those people we mention aloud now by name. May they all experience the healing presence of Christ and the Spirit, we pray. 
God, God receive our prayer. That the risen Christ will gather before God the souls of all who have died. We especially pray for our members who have passed. We pray for Stephen Alderton, John Long, Father Frank Bober, Maurice LaPierre. We pray for Elsa, all those inscribed in our Book of Intentions, and those we mention aloud now by name. May they be at rest in Christ, we pray. God, God receive our prayer. And for what else shall we as a community pray today? Please offer your prayers in silence of your homes. For all of these prayers and those prayers that have gone unspoken, we pray, God, God receive our prayer. God of infinite wisdom, your son Jesus Christ promises to remain with his church always by sending us his spirit of love. Help us remain with him, especially during times of fear, doubt, and uncertainty of the present and the future. Give us hope to sustain us and give us life. Let our prayers become before you this day through Christ the risen Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which your earth has given and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. May our prayers rise up to you, O God, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O God, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O God, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect offering may be made in your name. Therefore, O God, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O God, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the bishops, clergy, and all the religious and entire people that have been gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray the prayer that the risen Christ has given us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us extend to one another a greeting of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those invited to this Eucharistic meal. Lord, I'm not worthy worthy that you should enter under our roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.